Hi, my name is Pat Adams, a spiritual director and blogger about the spiritual life. The consuming interest of my life has been this, how do I, how do we live a life centered in God? And yet deeper still, who am I really? What is my purpose? How do I connect deeply with God? These are the questions I will address in this video series. Both psalms on the screen perfectly express why Christians need to be contemplative. My soul waits for God alone in silence. My soul finds rest in God, or be still. For all our knowledge of the Bible and our ability to quote chapter and verse, we have nothing if our soul doesn't find rest in God, in the silence of His presence. Our certainty and trust in God does not come from our biblical knowledge or from our beliefs about God. Our trust in God rests in the deep, redemptive relationship with God. And it's not just our personalities that are to rest in God in the silence. It is our souls that have center stage in this relationship. Our personalities, egos, small selves are not the center of our relationship with God. The soul is our true center. It is the one who leads us to this depth. Our soul may be the communicator within us to God or the voice of God within us. It may be the keeper of the created agenda for our lives, our purpose. It may be all these things, but it is clearly how we communicate with God. And if the soul rests in God, what happens to the personality and the ego, the small selves that are served in the world? They are to be brought under the aegis of the soul. The soul needs our voice, our hands, feet, bodies and minds, our passion and ardor, our actions and gifts in order to fulfill its purpose. And this all happens through the deep relationship with God so that what is human and egoic gets healed and what is left is devoted to God and used in God's service. So the ego is brought under the aegis of the soul and serves the larger self. The ego also grows under the aegis of the soul to become the relaxed and devoted human being able to express all of who he or she is because all of his or her very human needs and their divine purpose are being fulfilled. So the ego quiets down and aligns itself with the soul, no longer needs to call attention to itself. The currency of this new being is trust in God. Not just saying, oh, I trust in the Lord, as an expression of belief, but actually living without fear and anxiety or anger, because we deeply trust the Lord to meet all our needs, because we have surrendered our lives to Him, because we have allowed Him to teach us who He is, because we are no longer captives of the world because we want to live in the kingdom, because we are whole and no longer divided. It is in silence that we get to know God. When we sit in His presence, not only do we get to know the Creator, but we are also establishing our willingness to be with Him, to take in what He offers us, to follow His lead, to consistently say yes to His call, if we don't experience God in silence, we're certainly not going to be able to find Him in the busyness of our lives. All of our voice prayers will be about what we want to happen for this person, or for ourselves, or with this event, all expressions of our egos. We might think that silence is the absence of noise, but it is more about relaxing our thinking brain especially the repetitive tapes that try to keep us on track so that we can be with God in the silence. And God's presence with us has a palpable effect, a real sense of something present, of someone, something being with us. 
Our daily practice of silence has one great spillover effect in the rest of our lives. We can access that silence and God's presence at any moment because we sit in the silence daily with Him. So we can find God in the midst of the clamor. There is His voice suggesting, hinting, pointing. In the midst of a busy calendar, we can hear Him suggesting which item has priority, what to tackle first. We can, in the midst of a meeting, hear His voice suggest what to say. We can access His help in making a decision anytime. When we sit in silence daily in His presence, we can hear God in our busy, noisy lives leading us this way to our great benefit, always offering the next step for us to take, the next lesson for us to learn. With the practice of silence, we have 24-hour-a-day access to the Source, the indwelling Spirit within us. Wow! Have you thought about what that would mean to your life? Coming out of your own depths, the voice of God and your soul combine to give your life's meaning and purpose and help and depth, all so that you can in turn be helpful in bringing in the kingdom here on earth. Have you thought about what a privilege that would be to be so attuned to God that you are no longer sure where the inspiration comes from? God or deep within you? Can you imagine how it would feel to answer God's call to the purpose of your life? What would it mean to fulfill the promise of your creation? If you love God at all, there is always His invitation to follow Him into your own depths, where all things are given as needed and all needs fulfilled. It's a wholly different way of living. No longer are you outer referenced, looking for clues from others as to how you should be and look in this world. Now you are totally inner referenced, getting your inspirations from God and your soul, working together with your personality to express all that you were created to be. Have you imagined for a moment what God would ask of you? I think so often we project that God will send us off to some Stone Age tribe so that we can convert them, or send us to the poorest country to live among the natives and convert them, or to whatever constitutes our greatest fear. My experience of God's calls is that they take you one step at a time. To me, it's a sure sign of the Holy Spirit if the idea proposed leaves me breathless, just beyond what I can imagine for myself but never a huge, great departure from what I am doing now into a cavernous unknown. Most of us aren't Saul on the way to Damascus, who encountered the risen Jesus and in three days set off in a totally opposite direction. But even he took a few years to totally reorient his life before he set out to converting the Gentiles. God works with us where we are and then provides all we need to take the next step and the next step, and the next one. He knows us so well that He knows exactly what we need to do right now. He knows just where to draw us along towards our created purpose without losing us along the way. It is a self-affirming process which acknowledges our gifts and talents and even challenges in creating the life we were meant to live. All that is needed is the establishment of a listening relationship, an inner ear attuned even in the midst of great busyness to the Lord, a contemplative life where we are never away from the influence of that still, small voice. All it takes is a partnership, a co-creative relationship with God. Out of the contemplative life grows a life of action, prompted by the spirit, not the ego. The more contemplative we are, the more our work and play and interactions with others are proposed by God. That is the contemplative life. Thank you for watching. I look forward to hearing from you soon.